killing me. <laughs> and Terry Labonte, a lot of damage to the nose of that car. What if he tore it up? It's fucking 75 degrees, and so you know what that means? Out in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio, we go in the great outdoors to cheese some bonus outdoor time. And it's going to be the case from today all the way through at least Friday going into Saturday. I mean, this is going to be the first of maybe two or three YouTube videos I may be considering. I know there's going to be a second one on Saturday at the candy store in Vermilion, Sugar Crush Candy. But I'm not sure if there's going to be a third one. I'll have to wait and see. But as far as Friday goes, yeah, there's going to be version 2 of Night of the Century, which to follow up version 1, the original installment, a year ago on November 4th. But same temperatures and everything. But what did I say on Facebook? Despite it being cold as balls for a majority of the fall, when we should have gotten some, you know, bonus warm weather like we did last year and the year before, majority of the fall season. So... Told you the Sandy Ridge season of 2023 wasn't over yet. You guys didn't want to believe me? Well, here we are. It's still going strong. It doesn't end until like sometime, you know, after Halloween going into the Checker Art of Parts 500 at Phoenix Championship. Race. Usually at the Checker Art of Parts 500 Championship Race, we give it one last spin. And before we close up shop until March through May of 2024 or just the next year in general when we kick off, you know, spring is in the air, which the next year will be season three. So, therefore, I look forward to all of this. It's going to be a damn good week. I mean, you saw the video at work earlier. and You saw my story of on, I typed on Facebook about how amazing my day was. Now, tonight, when we, when we go out in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio, it's only going to get better from here. So, let's not waste any more time rambling. We already did our mini chores. We shaved last night. So we can get it over with then. We don't have to worry about it today, which is what we're going to do. Every night we come in to park the bus on and off camera. So that way we don't have to worry about the next day. We go straight out the door no matter how long the mini chores take. So let's quit rambling and get on with this episode, which I think is going to be the Hermie Sadler installment of Neighborhood Fun. Tear it up like Terry Labonte. Are you comfortable where you are? Taking the highway over to my place in your car We stay up while we lay down Oh, I love when you come around No need to talk when we're together I could do you and me forever Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? So baby, are you comfortable? Oh, 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 oh. Are you comfortable? Oh, oh, oh. Are you comfortable? Oh, 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 You're something so unreal You knock me off my feet And that's just how I truly feel I don't know what I did to deserve your love But I know that I'm done searching You look good Boy, does it feel good to be back in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio After my... <laughs> But it's only like maybe one or two nice days, you know, thrown in between on and off YouTube. This is the first full on one we're spending on here on YouTube during Adventures in Autumn and God knows how long. Maybe since when the Adventures in Autumn during the beginning of the season, but boy does it feel good to be back. I mean we did unofficially come back the one day when <laughs> The last Thursday, last Thursday when we had the jumping incident with Ricky B. As much as I would like to count, I mean, that part counts. That part counts as, you know, Ricky B and the Crutch of Doom confirmed and that's how you get down in Sandy Ridge. And that's how you know that the mascot is back. As my friends in the middle school bus are coming back. That's how you know that, you know, the mascot of Sandy Ridge is back. But outside of that, unfortunately, we officially don't count that because it was nice at first. It could have been better, but it could have been worse. Unfortunately, a little inclement weather eventually rolled into the area, so we had to cut it short. So, but yeah, this is the, very, the first official one back in a very long time, and I missed everyone very, very much. And, yeah, I figured I'd throw in a, neighbor, I sneak in a neighborhood fun Terry up like Terry Labonte episode before it gets really, really cold, just like how I did that fall randomness video before that. And on the way back from work, that I we were actually getting ready to pull into my driveway. We saw the Jerry, we saw the Jerry Springer man coming down, coming around the corner, and here I am screaming it out loud in on the bus. And and Ashley, our new, or well, not so new anymore, 
she's just kind of now getting used to the place and becoming a regular staple. She asked me, first she asked me, why am I being so loud? And I said, that's one of my neighbors, Justin Dana Rogerson, better known as the Jerry Springer man. And she, of course, since, you know, half the neighborhood has nicknames and majority of the current, like newer ViaQuest staff don't know this about my neighborhood. It's like, why is he nicknamed the Jerry Springer man? And I told them, I told her the July 24th story. And four years later, it's still hilarious even to this day because shit like that, I'll never not find funny. I'll never not find any of that shit funny. I can't believe July 24th of next year will mark five years since that that actually happened. I mean, some iconic days in, with, with the Rogersons. That, um... Um... We know August 9th is an iconic day. I was going to save that for last, but... The one I really wanted to save for last because it was it's it was a funny event like when we the year we met, but then a sad event took place four years later. So as we as you saw as you know Michaela Carrazzo, the girl who plays Caitlin, the fictional Matt Bonner fan from Live and Love to Lab Rats, Go Spurs Go as they open up their season tomorrow for when Ben Yamba's official NBA debut. Well, on that day in 2019. I'll even show you. I'll even show you since we're already here. Okay, going into turn three. Over here is the turn three infield where Faragos basically have it all to themselves if you go or go into the corner. Basically, um, it was me and a, a younger a younger Marco, Mason, Cole, Vinny, and Duke were all here. I remember I didn't go to work that day. This was the last full year we had Murray Ridge. We worked at Murray Ridge because 2020, we didn't get a complete year as we all know. That's all Entourage we're gonna say for another video. Over here in turn three is where the explosion boy incident happened. So I came out, Land Richard Dawson lady quickly stopped me and said, where's my son? And so Jerry Springer man, I think had to work. So he had to miss it all. I couldn't find him and that's why I came out so late because I was a lot. That's why my mom didn't care if I stayed out till like a little bit after dark. So, um, I finally found them and we couldn't even find Gasket Blow and Girl, even though it's to be her defense, to be fair. This was like right, get out of here. This was right before she earned up Gasket Blow and Girl, because that didn't happen until December of that year when it's when the cold weather officially came 24 7, a year before the Sandy Ridge finale stuff existed. So that's another on charge we're going to save for another video too. But we finally found him and Richard Dawson's lady wanted him to um come home and he he refused like Jeff Gordon. Okay, so now he's Brett Bodine, 11 years old. You take away four years, that's 10, 9, 8. He was only seven back then. So he's mellowed out a little bit. I mean, not a fully under percent, but it's he's not as bad now like he was back then. You know, Supersonic Fan 113. I mean, that's part of being a kid, especially when you're the oldish. You're not, you're, when you, especially in this new generation, you're not the sharpest crayon in the box, even if you're the firstborn, but the older you get, the more you mellow out. And it takes a while before you fully 100% mellow out. But yeah, it took for us forever to get him to come back. And he was sent in the house for the night. And I basically just kept walking and walking much longer on my own and re-recorded those clips. If you remember that, you know, little blast from the past throwback that never made it to YouTube in real time on Michaela Carrazzo's birthday. So, yeah. But, yeah, so that incident was August 23rd, 2019. Unfortunately, four years later, we will never look at it, that look at that, that day, or let alone that incident the same way again, because on the same day, four years... Four years to that same day, unfortunately, the explosion boy lost his grandfather. So my heart continues to go out to the Rogerson and Boost and that whole family, especially, you know, Tyler and Nick, you know, because that was, you know, not only Richard Dawson, lady's dad, that was her brother's dad, you know, Nick. And that was, you know, that means it was Tyler's grandfather. So I could have, I could only imagine what they were going through when it happened, not just Jerry Springer, man, and Richard Dawson, lady themselves, or even... Or, but also, but especially Explosion Boy, Gasket Blowing Girl, Nick, Tyler. Because considering, considering, you know, keep in mind since Amber is thinking is Tyler's mom, you know, that's you know Amber's you know father-in-law, and of course Lily and the other granddaughter. I can only imagine what they were going through. I mean, I know what's the what's the, the term I would use because um. 
Oh yeah, the, the fact the term, you know, getting over something is a poor choice of words unless you're describing it for yourself. Um, I think that's a poor choice of words. I think now compared to back then, it doesn't really buy, it's, I know they have not totally, you know, got no, nobody totally gets over it unless they say it from themselves like, like, when it comes to losing someone. But I think the better choice of words you can describe it to other people outside of you, like, you know, I don't think it really bothers them as much now like it did in the beginning. Kind of like, you know, I never got a, a legitimate shot with Dale Earnhardt Sr. And that shit used to bother me a lot in the beginning. But now that it's been like 22 years, about to be 23 come next year, it thankfully doesn't bother me as much like it used to in the beginning. Plus, I've completely gotten over it too. So therefore, it, it's a little, for Earnhardt, for me with Earnhardt, it's a, it's a both. I've completely gotten over it and the fact it doesn't bother me as much at all anymore like it used to. <sighs> But here's another death, that, a celebrity death that, you know, I basically have gotten over. It doesn't bother, I don't even think about it anymore because I've had no fire to watch that girl Lele or like any of my shows in general since, you know, that one, that last, the last show we even watched on the lineup, the last show we watched on the lineup was the season two premiere of Villains of Valley View. We've not watched a single show since then because even before the strike, we've had no fire, no desire, no motivation to do so. But when David A. Arnold passed away a year ago, that shit hurt me for a long time because I was crazy about that guy, especially since because of, of you know, going able to go to his show, his final Netflix taping at eight for the week. Um, I was able to meet Anna Grace Arnold, which earned me the privilege of finally meeting my first of many friends from my shows. So that shit hurt me in the beginning. But luckily it was a bless it was kind of a blessing in disguise for like what I wanted to do in life because it kind of allowed me to get back in the fight when it came to be trick-or-treating for Halloween and dressing up. It gave me new costume ideas, which leads is leading into this year, as well as next year and the next two years after that. So I'm really excited. This year, I'm going to be a Navy SEAL from SEAL Team. Next year, I'm going to be Amy Madden from Villains of Valley View. And to make it more like, like a male costume, I'm going to put a Tim Duncan jersey over. This is a comedian right there. Um, I'm going to put a Tim Duncan jersey over it. And then um, the next two years after that, as long as Razor and I are still together, if I have a girlfriend, period, by then, we're going to do Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy related costumes. We're going to do one year. It doesn't matter the order. One year, we're going to do Pat Say Jack and Vanna White. I know that's a costume idea I've recycled, but it's always been incomplete. But this time, we're going to complete it. And then another year, we're going to do what basically from Jet Wheel and Jeopardy, Columbia TriStar Television, where I'm going to be the Pegasus and she's going to raise all or whoever. I could be dating any time during that time period. It's going to be the torch. Like, oh, the new neighbors moved in. Let's meet them. What a nice guy. What a nice guy. And pretty soon we'll hopefully meet a fiance soon. You know, Rachel. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, David A. Arnold really hurt, really was a hardest hard hitting celebrity that since Alex Trebek three years, three, well, now three years ago. And Charlie O 13 years ago. But it gave me an excuse to get back in the fight for Halloween. You know, I dressed up as him as an honor and, you know, it's, you know, it, it kind of like laid to this domino effect of me finally having costume ideas where, as I, as I described to you, Jason, I saw my boy coming through, well, like at the corner, at the corner of my eye. I came to say hi, but he ran inside. Well, we got a ton of oh, there you are. Two wholesome encounters in a row. What more do you ask for? You got you even got to see the beginning of the second one on camera. It's like, how fitting, how special. But anyway, yeah. So David and Arnold passing was basically was a hit in the gut for me. Like a semi truck hit my whole body, but only my gut going up up into my chest got affected. And let me tell you, I, I was not myself at work that day, if y'all remember. Even though he did die on the 7th when Adventures in Autumn Season 2 premiered, I didn't find out about it till 1 o'clock the next morning when I was getting ready to go to bed. I opened up my phone and I saw a mutual friend on Twitter back when I was still using it frequently who also knew David and David knew him. And besides knowing me, 
Um, Brian Behar, who worked on Fuller House with them behind the scenes, you know, put on, you know, put on his Twitter and then put David's picture. I'm very devastated to learn of the passing of David Arn. And then I had to reread that and I was like, my reaction was straight up. What the fuck? I could not believe it. I first I thought I first I thought he, there was he was trolling. I thought Brian was trolling. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure even in, initially I know I probably wasn't trolling, but I had to Google it just to be sure. And yeah, it was too good to be true. And so I I jumped out of my bed. I jumped out of my bed, opened my door. Cause I don't lock the door to go to bed on work nights. I I actually banged on my mom's door because that's how that's how devastated I was myself. And she thought it was my grandfather knocking because something was wrong with him or my grandmother. I said, "No, it's me, mom. That's something something happened to me. Well, not not really, but you know what I mean. Some that something gonna, that's part of my life. David A. Arnold just passed away, and that, I had described him as the the person that um my dad took me to see. And let me tell you." As soon as my mom said, go get some rest, I went to do that. I could not fall asleep at first at all. We got company. Anyway, I, I've tried to finish the story three or four times and I haven't been able to. Um, yeah, I could not go to sleep at first at all. And at work at the beginning of the day, I wasn't myself. This is before, you know, Viacor became the big deal that it is today, almost a year later. And then, you know that girl from Mom's Meals, Alyssa, that came in? That one consumer that always got, you know, you know, food, um, that always got food, um, always got food, you know, food packages. Unfortunately, he doesn't get them no more, so there's only to come. Luckily, I was, uh, luckily, um, uh, what? No, thank you. Luckily, I, uh, luckily, um, I was, I was able to, ha I was able to share that, you know, moment of, moment of grief with her before, no, because this was a triad consumer that used to get food, food packaging for mom's meals. And before he said he didn't, he, before they said he didn't want, he, before they said he's not going to get them anymore. I'm glad I had that moment with Alyssa to, you know, share how I was feeling with her about David A. Arnold's passing. And then right five minutes after she leaves, our, our probably one of our biggest honchos, Tony Brent, comes in. Oh my God, did that make me feel better? But then in, in the neighborhood, the sadness came back. The sadness came back and I was going around. Well, first I was like, you know, staying in my garage and not and every, every time my friends were calling me, I did not respond. I did not respond. I was not happy and I was blatantly ignoring them. They can, you know, usually when I do that, that usually means something's wrong with me. And so they kind of knew it. And so they all ran into my garage to come check on me to see if I was okay. And then I kind of, kind of motivated me to go from door to door to tell everybody what the hell, what the hell happened. And with that night in Sandy Ridge, if you remember, this wasn't YouTube. Thankfully, we, thankfully I didn't, well, you could have said, well, why didn't you YouTube it for like, you know, as a, you know, to, to, you know as you're all, you're honoring you, you know, as you're like, <laughs> celebration of life for your number one actor comedian of all time well here's the thing i didn't think i would have to the same way i felt about brooke park all those years until this year before before covid stopped everything and took away my fire motivation and desire so um yeah i didn't think i would have to we we could just do that on other social media platforms and that's what we did and yeah but luckily it gave me an idea for a costume, a new idea. So I decided to dress up as that guy. I dress up as him as to honor his legacy. So I, I, I took that one photo of him that you saw before you. I tried to match the outfit as possible. It wasn't hundred percent perfect or accurate. I just did the best I could. I just did the best I could, and it gave me an ex you know a bunch of his friends from from that girl lady Nickelodeon journal saw it and they loved it. So therefore, um. It gave me an excuse to come back in the fight. So him passing away was a blessing in disguise for in terms of my Halloween plans from last year, this year, go and beyond. So this year it's going to, yeah. So I'll, let me get this out of, off my chest before I go into Halloween story mode. Um, so, oh, okay. All right. So therefore now that, you know, after that Halloween ended and we did that, Mike and Mo birthday rager for Michael Malley and Maura Quirk from Global Guts as one celebrates their birthday on the 30th, the other celebrates on the 31st. So I decided to combine them together as one. 
And this year, like I said, this year, like I said, we're not going to do that. And we're not going to do that this year or next year or ever again. That was just a one-time thing for like special occasion because of all whose life we were honoring at the same time as we had 90s Nick and modern Nick, you know, combined all as one. And, um, yeah, so it was a special night. And then, of course, you know, we had the Sandy Ridge finale as always. And everything was all right again. Everything was all right again. You know, just like how we say in our, outro, our extended version of the outro. Just when you think things will never be okay again, here comes a miracle that proves you way wrong. Because, like, as, like after, Dave, after I was going through David A. Arnold's passing, the aftermath and shit, I didn't think things were ever going to be okay again. Or I wouldn't say again. Because they have to be okay again eventually. I, I didn't think things were going to be okay again for like, oh, not forever, but like for a while. But then we got back in the fight in Halloween for tra dressing up and trick or treating after a two year absence due to COVID. You know, such being at my dad's in 2020 when he lived in, in the Appleseed house. And then, of course, you know, lack of costume idea in 2021. So it cr attracted a can of worms to get me back in the fight. 20, for last year, this year, and 24, 25, 20, and the next three years after that, you know. So, yeah, and guess what? Almost exactly a year, almost over exactly, over exactly a year after David A. Arnold's passing, I'm pretty much, in this, I can properly say accurate, I properly and accurately say, not only does it not bother me as, as much at all, it doesn't even bother me at all anymore. In fact, I've completely gotten over that. But one, two celebrity deaths I'll never get over because when you get some, it's a celebrity you idolize as an adult, yeah, it's easier to get over. But if someone you idolize as a child, even as an adult, when they, you know, obviously they die after you become an adult, if they're older, like Alex Trebek and Charlie O'Donnell, yeah. For them being gone, Alex will be have gone for three years come November. Charlie, November 10th. It's crazy to think they died exactly in the same month, exact like 10 years and seven days apart. Yeah, 10 years and seven days apart, 2010 and 2020. Yeah, I will never get over that. That's for sure. But anyway, so my next two cut my after though, 23, 23, 24. 25. So my next four costume cost plan costumes, including this year. This year it's going to be a Navy SEAL from SEAL Team. Next year it's going to be Amy Madden from um from Villains of Valley View. Um, you know, with the Tim Duncan jersey over it to make it look less female than it actually is. And then the next two years after that, 25 and 26, it doesn't matter what order, it's going to be me and Razel together. Pat say Jack and Vanna White one year, and then Columbia TriStar Television the next year. I know I've repeated that Pat Sajak concept twice. Only reason why I had to repeat it twice is because I tried to get a, van, a female to be Vanna, and either A, they, they didn't want to do it, or B, they planned to do it, but then all of a sudden they had a bigger commitment that was more important than me that came up, so they had me go by myself. But I'm pretty sure Razel won't do that to me as long as we're still together by then. So that's one gonna be one year, and then another year, it's going to be the Torch Columbia Torch Lady and TriStar Pegasus where Razor's whole have to get a fake light bulb torch because a, a real flame torch can, 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 will, will be an accident waiting to happen. So we have to get her a, 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 a fake light bulb torch and we have to find me a, a, like a white horse costume because I get the idea. I got the idea from Wheel It's in Jeopardy. Um, from when they produced, when the Columbia Trust of Television produced both of them from the year I was born all the way till 2002. So it'll go to show the new generation of all ages, no matter how old they are, how old I am. So we've had a little bit of action in the happiest place in Northeast Ohio. So my plan is to hopefully secure a TikTok and a true adventures in autumn TikTok before we really go big on Halloween for Halloween and the Sandy Ridge finale. So. And I know in 2022, we went big for both with three of them in, well, three of them in total, one on Halloween and two, and during the two day Sandy Ridge finale last year, we did, we went all out. I know in the 2021 Sandy Ridge finale, we didn't really, we kind of did it quietly and we kind of did it smoothly to like close out for a year of redemption from what was the weird ass year we had the year before. Since where nothing's going on, I think I can talk, tell some random stories. Just about random stuff. So, 
when I took my two YouTube breaks in 2020, no, 2016 and 2020, no, 2016 and 2019 going into 2020, I mentioned how many more subscribers I could have had. If most of those throwback videos you, you've been seeing, that if they would have made it to YouTube in real time, how many more videos I would have had in total by now? That's only going to get made up now because, you know, they're finally getting posted on the like anniversary and, and, and shit. But imagine if it would have got posted there the original day it was recorded. All those things were recorded. Probably not the same way I've been doing it with bonus clips added in there and shit. But, you know, and imagine how much more subscribers I would have had too. But it was just God to have saying, not yet, Mark, not yet. But, but yeah, but as, we, well, I wouldn't say a million little things because we already knew this even before AMLT existed. As we all know, but a million little things like put, like, you know, really pr like prove, probably prove this to be 100% true, correct and accurate, even though there are very little people that don't believe in this saying, and even though it is true, everything happens for a reason. And even if it's bad, it really does happen for a reason. Because remember that life lesson during that YouTube break that we were telling ourselves how I remember the month of misery for those who you who followed my Instagram and my old Twitter account in 2019, the month of misery in March. And then we, the month of redemption started off really good. And then it just got worse from there. I mean, not as egregious as that whole month of March 2019, but you know what I mean. Don't think about the bad things that happened instead. No, I mean, I can't remember exactly how I said it was about not worrying about the bad things that, um, don't like be upset about the bad things that, you know, that took place during that month. Instead, think of all the good things that'll come out of it in the end. Something like that, but it proved to be true. It did prove to be true. And then even though we got a late ass start to this summer with the weather come June of that year, concerning how freezing cold spring was until like, the last Winston All-Star is at Charlotte going into Memorial Day at the Coke 600. <sighs> ended up being great. And then we ended up getting a, a great end of 2019. Beginning of 2020, despite all the tragedies that was happening. And um, Robert Yates, man. This, and almost losing Newman was pretty bad. Um, it looked like, you know... We were going to have the, the the year of our lives, right? And we all know how that turned out. Boy, were we wrong. And as they all say, the rest is history. Uh, Incomplete. Ready? Go. Hike. Say hike. Hike. You guys ran late. Uh, nice catch. Touchdown. Or as Kamikaze would say, cheating the douchebag. Incomplete. Run, what are you waiting for? Much better. Nice! Run! That was good. That was not good. That was great. Oh. He made it. Dan, you gotta do a dance. Dan! You gotta dance. You have to dance. Do a dance. Come on, think of something. Yeah, that's more like it. That wasn't that cool. Wasn't that cool. Anyway, let's see what else we can find and who else we can see. One hour later. Oh, I know that album only because I've seen the album cover multiple times on in people's Instagram stories. <laughs> they title some of these albums out, I would swear words. I, I know there was a D12 song that, you know, that like on, on D12 World from when I was in Michigan, I was 10 years old in 2004, they had a song called Bitch. I kid you not. 
one time my dad had an outcast cd that was you know speaker box the love below where all the songs that they made them who they were today were on there my dad had the dirty version and so well, i was like nine years old in 2003 when it came out i he always for some odd reason sometimes my mom and dad will leave their cars unlocked for whatever reason my mom still does that but luckily hers is always in the garage so that's why you know um you know, like you know, nobody, nobody go, nobody, no, no. That's why she, you don't have to worry. She doesn't have to worry about like being taken away. But when my dad used to do it on Lenore, I used to, I one time snuck into his car and took that Outcast CD out and kept it for myself. And I know I cuss a lot now, but I cussed way more back then because of that CD. I, I when I was listening to Ricky and Martin's Smooth Jazz, I, I, I doubled my cussing from from normal because I listened to too much rap music either from like dirty versions of songs from nba live games that you know they had a, the artist had to clean up to put ea to put it into the game or like you know saw album dirty album that snuck out of my dad's car yeah. i wouldn't do that now because i am i'm older but when i was a kid i was a different animal what would you what would you tell if you if the kid version of me and any uh, any age would like to pop out of me right now and he would come and come what would you say to him I wouldn't say anything. I let I just let him do the talking. If if the kid version of me would would appear out of nowhere, whether it be from the sky, like or like snuck up behind me, us, or just popped out of me spiritually and came on physical form, what would you tell him? I mean, like keep what keep doing what you're doing because. You in the future is doing pretty good. You in the future that you see right here with the glasses, because I didn't start wearing glasses until I was nine years old. Yep. That's yeah, two thousand well, two thousand three, two thousand four I started wearing glasses. The first year the Spurs didn't have David Robinson. Yep. Yeah, I it kinda of felt it kinda of felt naked without Robinson that first, but then by oh four or five it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Because when I, when I first got became a Spurs fan, I grew up with Duncan Robinson there the whole time. That's why the first year we didn't have him, it felt naked for me. Yeah. That's why I was a little sad. We, like, I was happy that we won and sent him all the, on top, but I was sad I was going to miss seeing him play. But I think what was more sad, because he was my favorite, was Duncan retiring the, the, the season we met. 20, well, no, we met in 2014-15. He retired when, like, the, like when... when but that was the season Lulu was living with you guys. 2015-16. That was when he retired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was so sadder for me because, you know, he was my favorite. And the fact that I, at the time I couldn't imagine the Spurs without him. Now that, I'm, now that it's, it's been seven years, I basically moved on. Yeah. It's not a big deal anymore. I haven't been out late as much lately because it's been cold as balls and the weather has been to my liking. I was out last Thursday, but I had to cut it short because inclement weather rolled in. <sighs> Have you been outside at all lately? Yeah. Even when it's cold out? Well, I do cross country. Oh. So I run outside all the time. Mm. I just watched, uh, walked my dogs. I saw that. Yeah. Did you take a shower? Yeah. I, oh, you smell good. Thank you. Is that cologne? No. Oh, okay. All right. And just like that, that'll conclude the Hermie Sadler installment of Neighborhood Fun Tear It Up Like Terry Labonte. I just wanted to throw in at least one more installment of that for the season before it gets really, 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 really cold after, you know, the whole, this next the three more days of this bullshit including night of the century version two on friday off youtube and then halloween and then the sandy raids finale and then as you all know the rest is history so i hope you enjoyed today the, enjoyed the video i put out earlier today and over on tiktok at least as far as the copyright bastards this one's for you but until next time this is mark Oliveira signing off my next video if you don't see anything from the happiest place in Northeast Ohio later this week, including the end of the century, which we don't we don't even put that on YouTube. But like I said earlier in the video, I don't think I have to. Because I didn't think I would ha I have to. But fr th Saturday for sure, when we go to the candy store in Vermilion Sugar Crush, there will be a YouTube video on that just for funsies. And then after that, a Halloween video. So it's not going to be a crazy Mike and Moe birthday rager like it was last year. It's not going to be any of that shit.
It's just going to be a regular Halloween vlog. And as long as the weather guys don't screw us over after that, then the annual San Diego finale for 2023. So have a good night tonight and a better day tomorrow. Life will give you a lot of lows. When you hit a high, enjoy it. It ain't for the week. Goddamn, pace yourself. Bring your ass, be you. You have to try harder to do less. You can't deport a dream. Sometimes the worst things in life lead to the best things. Always bet on the side of love. You got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Sometimes you just got to be present. You never fail until you stop trying. It never pays to worry too much about things. It's never too late to turn the day around. Another day on time, another day to shine. Sometimes you just got to flock yourself. Trust your instincts, stand up for yourself, not back down to anyone. All for one, one for all. You got to bounce. Just when you think things will never be okay again, here comes a miracle that proves you way wrong. A connection can happen when you least expect it. Honesty is the best policy. Sometimes you just got to dive in, follow your dreams, show up for the rest of your life. When you're all cheering together, every day is a win. There is no tomorrow. Everyone is strong in many different ways. Sometimes you don't get to choose who you love. Take care, everyone. Good night. And again, no TikTok dances were done on this day, but that's okay. We got three more chances of this before we go to the candy store in Vermillion this coming Saturday and do a YouTube video where we go with the, any TikToks I get done that particular day. So see you later, everyone.